So, if somebody if somebody would wanted to set up a, a, a talent academy, and you wanted to, uh, you're a company, and you've you've got a sales force, you've got a sales force existing. Yeah. In terms of uh, the cost to acquire sales, to train and to recruit and develop sales, there's always been a period of, you know, can the Royal Talent Academy bring some advantages in terms of the way that you're considering training so that they're more. Uh, the salespeople are more Get up better to speed. equipped. Yeah. yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. And I think that's one of the key things. That if you take on an experienced person, you want a return on your investment re relatively quickly. Um, look, I don't know what it is over all um, industries, but typically in sales and in industries that I've worked in, you want a month, uh, a three month return. So if you hire somebody within within uh, on, you know say April the first, you know by June or whatever, you want to start seeing a return on that person, an experienced person. If you take on a rookie or, or uh, you know new talent or somebody that hasn't got that sales experience before, you expect to have a longer period of time before you get a return on investment. But the research that I've done and just from my experiences and bearing in mind that I've been employed salespeople for the last seven years suggests to me that it's not as long as you think. You could probably get a similar return off a off a rookie, uh, somebody who hasn't done it, than somebody's experience because. Somebody who's experienced wants guarantees. They want, well, I've already been earning this, so you start paying them more money. You start paying them more guarantees on their bonuses or their commissions or whatever it might be. Whereas a rookie, they're fresh. You can mould them. It's a little bit like you take your driving test. Oh, don't do tricks. Yeah, well, you take your driving test. If, if you drive, right? I drive. If I took my driving test today, I'd fail. Why? Because I don't pretend to do anymore. I cross my hands, I put my elbow out. It's the same thing. People pick up bad habits. Whereas if you've got, if you've got a fresh team of people, talent, an academy, 10 or 12 heads or 8 heads or whatever it might be, all doing the same thing, all learning at the same time, putting their own personalities in at the same effort, having all the same sorts of targets and milestones in order for them to achieve, isn't that collectively going to be more effective than having dribs and jabs of experienced people? No, I don't do it that way, I do it my way, I do it my way. How can your business function effectively when you've got people doing it all of their own thing? Now look, I'm not here to you know harp on about everybody should get fresh talent, raw talent in, but I'm saying there's a balance there. And yeah. A lot of people, where is your next superstar coming from? Yeah. You know, I, do, I do a lot of uh, public speaking, a lot, of, uh, a lot of talking, a lot of events at colleges and universities. I'm there ambassador for business enterprise for Harrow College for example and one of my roles there is to actually look at talk, talking to 18, 19, 20 year olds to say what are you looking at doing you know after this education how are you going to go about doing things and you know and and, and trying to get them understanding um, you know what jobs potentially could be out there for them or should they set up on their own and, and all that sort side of things so there's a lot of different elements to, to the War Talent Academy. But for me, it's not just about what like, get everybody in fresh, it's about getting, getting that balance and making sure that you've got something. Your next Steven Gerrard, if you like, your next superstar, your next Lewis Hamilton, where are they coming from? Because Lewis Hamilton, Steven Gerrard, the Williams sisters, they all come from academies, that's what they did. You cut, Steven Gerrard's been at Liverpool since he was eight years old. Why is he such a good player? Why is he so embedded into that company, uh, to that football club's ethos? Because he is Liverpool. And if you set up academies in business, it has the same effect. So what about uh, what about uh, the, the the geographic nature um, of, of what uh, where an academy can set up? Is it just is it a London thing? Can it be done anywhere? Oh, it's, it's, it, it can be it can be done anywhere. I mean, I'm talking to organisations that are um, up in Manchester, in Bristol, uh, down in London. Um, we've just signed a uh, water tank academy. We've just signed a deal with Blue Arrow. Um, so we're working with Blur now, partly in Pelham Group. Um, we've also signed a contract with Personal Care Bank. So again, it's a recruitment business. We also signed a contract with AstraZeneca. So you know, within the six-month period, I'm, I'm managing to um, work alongside these big organisations. Sorry to name drop, but you know, it's just it's just well, a case of it's a credibility issue. You know what I mean? So you know, and, and we're working with a lot of different businesses and colleges and universities, doing a lot of work with uh, Loughborough University and all that sort of stuff as well on on separate things. But certainly, you know, it's not just that that one region. My office is based in South Oxfordshire. I'm in London most of the time, as you know, but that doesn't necessarily mean that we can't work work out where we are. But you asked me a question before, you know, how, how does it work? It's client driven. So once a client says to me, okay, we're interested, we want to do this, that's when I will start ramping up the advertising and the, and the, um, the awareness of what's happening. It's kind of like the War Town Academy bus is in your area, I'll come and apply. Yeah, you know, so it'll be that sort of thing. Of so, you know, if somebody wants to apply for um, an, an opportunity in Manchester, right at this moment, we won't have anything because we haven't got an academy at, at, at happening in Manchester at the moment. However, 
that doesn't necessarily mean to say that there won't be something happening in Manchester. So that makes sense? sense. That makes absolute sense. Um, no, very, very interesting. So uh, in, in terms of the, 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 the growth of Broad Talent Academy, I'm sure as the business grows, there's going to be other offshoots that's going to open up to for different sort of bolt-ons and add-ons for, uh, for, for the business. Is there anything you're thinking about at the moment you'll consider adding, adding into the pot? I mean, I've noticed the website's growing, it's developing all the yeah, time. Yeah, exactly, yeah. You might have a couple more ideas of something that you're bringing in that you might want to talk about now, you might not. No, no, but no, But there might be something that you think that's, uh, that, that's going to be added. This. Well, I think, I think one, of the, one of the importance is that, if I explain the three phases, the search and selection phase, the audition phase, and the training phase, um, of the whole Watertown Academy piece. Some organisations don't want to buy the whole piece. Some organisations say, well, I've actually got quite a lot of people referrals coming into my business, but I don't know how to train them. So then they look at me and look at my training development programs and yep. say, okay, we'll buy that piece. So I've, I've, I've you know, we've tried to adapt to, to what our clients' needs are and what our customers' needs are. One of the other things, we, what I would like to do as well, is to uh, put something together which is around development or career development. So not just necessarily, it's very much focused on sales. It's what we, it's what we know at World Talent Academy, it's what we're all about. But to actually adapt and, and to start doing some sort of career development around giving mental and business advice and, and, and guidance to people that don't necessarily want a career in sales, but they just want some sort of direction. When I left school badly, I didn't have a clue what I wanted to do. And my hand was false, but at the time I was 18, I had a mortgage and two jobs, right? But, you know, that's a different story. But for me, my hand was false but for, from that. But I didn't know what I wanted to do. And so many youngsters, I'm talking about Generation Y now, 16 to 24, so many youngsters don't know what they want to do. And they'll be watching this now, or be, you know, reading it back or whatever, and they'll be going, yeah, that's me, I don't know what to do. And it, it's about giving them a platform. I've been speaking to the uh, Department of Work and Pensions now for, for a while about uh, their new enterprise schemes that they've got coming on, um, which are fantastic. So anyone that's looking to, uh, to get into enterprise to, to have a look at that and, and check out, um, check out the, the websites and stuff for the government. But for, I've been working with them a long time now about the mentoring side, because I think it's, it's really important if you can have somebody, you can just bounce ideas off, not, not necessarily to run the business, but just to bounce ideas off and to understand, okay, I'm going through this, so is this a problem um, that I can share with you or whatever, is a massive, massive thing that I didn't have. You know, when you didn't have that direction. You know, when you're young, you just think, kind sure. of think, oh, I'll do this, I'll do a bit of that, you know, you know and, it, and it wasn't really structured. And, for me, the reason why I've been successful in business with Capita, the reason why I've been successful in winning The Apprentice and working for Lord Sugar for, for, for the two years that I did and setting up the AM screen and relatively successful now with Watertown Academy is about planning, it's about being prepared, it's about making sure that you have a, uh, a map, if you like, or a plan that you can actually achieve things every day. Because if you achieve every day, then you're motivated. If you're motivated every day, then you want to go and achieve more. Do you see what I mean? Absolutely. It's, it's very, very, again, simple, but that's the, that's the key attributes I think that we need. Do you know what? Today I've interviewed, I've interviewed two people. I a guy called James, I was a guy called Winkball. Yeah. I think yourself. Uh, and James this morning, uh, it was like the, the oozy of passion. You, you, you two guys, you should, you should hook up, I swear, because oh, yeah. you are... You're so passionate about what, what you're doing and what you're, what you're doing at Royal Town Academy, and that really, really clearly shows. And I, I, I think... I think that is just how passionate you are. It's gonna, it's gonna uh, give people the uh, that the start that they need to start considering. So, sometimes it's a confidence thing, Brad, isn't it? Now, yeah. I mentioned and I, I mentioned on purpose earlier about me not being confident. That's why I went, went on the Apprentice. What the Apprentice did for me was showed that you can set up a fish stall and, st and make money. That you can <laughs> set up a laundry business, yeah, and start banging on doors and making money. The hardest thing about selling is actually picking up that phone, making that first contact. The hardest thing is making that first contact. You've got 20 minutes once in a face-to-face. -face. If you mess it up, are you going to get out of business? That's the hard. People don't want to do it. You know, yeah, oh, I am going to do it. Yeah, you know, five, six years of experience. Yeah, yeah. they yeah. face the fear. Yeah. Do it anyway. You yeah. know, it's about just getting in there and doing it and getting over that that kind of initial fears and. Once you've done that, it gives you that confidence. If you've got that confidence to say, you know what, I know this idea is good, I've done my research, I've got my knowledge, I know uh, from the market conditions and the competitors' analysis or whatever you've done that this is a good business idea, I'm going to go for it. And that's why I set up World Town Academy. I knew in my own heart, look, it's tough. It's, it is tough, there's no doubt about it. You know, you have to make sacrifices. You know, I've got a mortgage, etc., etc., and all of that sort of stuff, and to walk away from a fantastic job, from a fantastic mentor, with great, with Simon Sugar and everything, you know, it was hard to do that. But I knew that if I can do it, and I can start to build it up to, to where it currently is now and beyond, 
I knew, I knew it was going to be the right decision for me. So my message effectively to, to people out there would be that if you've got an idea and you think it checks out, get critique. Make sure that people are critiquing it because it's massively important. But if you still think it's good after all of them things, go for it. Oh, there's, a, there's, there's a clear message. Uh, what a fantastic interview uh, we've had today uh, with, with Lee McQueen. Um, I'm sure there's, there, there, there's, there's some questions that, that uh, wanted, to, uh, wanted, to be, wanted to be asked. Uh, we did lose connection slightly in between. Uh, there's a couple more slides just to run through um, just before we go on. Uh, today is probably the first time we've been on Raw Business TV with someone uh, well, actually, is is the first apprentice winner on, on Raw TV, so that that's the first. I, I'd like uh, uh, anyone who's watching Raw Business uh, uh, members, uh, if you've got any potential uh, opportunities to, to do, or you want to speak to Lee regarding to set up a talent academy, we're going to give you some contact details uh, now uh, to contact Lee or to contact his company. Uh, you can call, uh, is this the right number we've got here, Lee? 01844 yeah, yeah, right, yeah. And we've got info at rawtalentacademy.com. And of course, please do visit the website, um, www.rawtalentacademy.com. Um, um, thank you very much indeed no for joining worries, us yeah, today. Really enjoyed it's great to meet you in person, yeah, really finally. Good, yeah, and obviously, good, every success of what you're you doing, I, I think you're an absolute advocate for, for sales, not just that, for, for business. You're a very passionate man, you're very driven. And I think the apprentice and what you're doing now is absolutely awesome, mate. And uh, I, I just wish you every continued success, Perfect. mate. You you're, too, mate. You're, you're, you're a great bloke, I'm very down to earth as well, which is, which is always nice as well. Um, so, thank you very much indeed for joining us today, from everybody uh, that's watching. Next time, we've got Claire Wright, Monday, the 7th of March at 1 o'clock uh, on Raw business TV uh, that's it from us today from from Wardour Street and uh, as you know my books coming out in a couple of months and all these people that I'm meeting all these fantastic entrepreneurs these exciting people that are doing it they really do make uh, you know great uh, material uh, and every single time I meet somebody I pick up something else we're just gonna <laughs> go up there now I'm just gonna mention this idea uh, to, to, to Lee that I've uh, had in my mind he's probably already got it covered but in any case it's goodbye for me from Raw TV goodbye thank you very much indeed